hey guys welcome back to the channel good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you're watching from thank you guys as always for uh for joining back on the channel to catch the video and this is the second video of the day the first one uh we obviously talked about how our nigerian you know super eagles players were uh you know high performers in their respective uh, club sites over the weekend we saw a number of our guys get the goals for their teams inspire their teams to victory some actually inspired their teams to draw and of course uh, you know we had some that were on the losing side as well but general overall you know i thought our nigerian spikes players played some really vital roles for their teams over the weekend uh, but for this video guys there are a few more interesting updates and topping the list is the fact that uh, nfl has now uh, started having advanced conversations with uh Emmanuel Amunike for the possibility of taking over the Super Eagles head, uh, head coach job. Of course, you do know that, uh, you know, Austin Aguavon is currently the man that's occupying that position, you know, as a caretaker coach or interim manager. Uh, you know, the reason for this actually is uh, because at the time of the, uh, at the time that Poseiro actually left the job, uh, Aguavon was the head of technical department with the nff so he was technically employed to the nff he was on their payroll uh, that was why they had to give him that job for him to oversee their position so it will not be vacant in the meantime until they get someone else to fill that slot and that's you know what what's what's happened right now but nff uh you know according to the updates are very determined they are very uh serious about getting someone uh to re uh, to fill in that void and of course Eguavon can go back to you know handling his technical department you know with the NFF his normal job uh, and the updates now as I said Emmanuel Munike tops the list right now uh, the report is that they've been having some uh, sort of advanced conversations about how the deal is going to be and the report also is that Emmanuel Munike uh, could be joined by a number of household uh, names legends of the nigerian super Eagles that we all know uh the likes of sunday lucy uh the likes of the bull daniel omokachi and 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 a whole lot of them i'll definitely keep my fingers crossed about this update and you know it's going to be exciting to see how this unravels so make sure you're subscribed to the channel guys so you don't miss this updates guys time from emmanuel munike who's now been having advanced conversations with nff about the possibility of taking over nigerian spy groups there's also mike nciang who is uh, uh an american born nigerian coach he currently coaches the us under 19 team and he has quite a lot of experiences uh coaching in the us and uh he is tipped as the as one of the candidates uh, largely considered for this uh, job by the NFF. Uh, he has everything it takes. People are saying he is the modern uh, coach uh, that has elite mentality of uh, you know what it takes to coach in Nigerian Super Eagles. He has his uh, his uh, UFA A licensing for coaches. He's also had his uh, uh, his uh, uh, US soccer pro licensing, which makes him qualified for this job but we'll see how this one unravels in the next couple of uh, days uh, but right now nff are having a much more advanced conversations with amunike uh, but of course iman uh, sorry mike is saying is still another potential candidate that might get the job uh, but we'll follow this one up make sure you subscribe to the channel guys to get this uh updates when it happens uh, so moving on guys let me let you know that standing while bali uh, is in the news and he's been in the news a, a number of days now and of course uh, this one has to do with his transfer we've talked about this a number of times uh, on the channel you know whereby you know uh, we there, there has been rumors about uh, uh, standing while bali actually receiving potential uh, suitors or potential offers from different club sites both in europe both in uh, the saudi pro league uh, one of those times uh, we talked about it and he said himself that uh, he wasn't getting any of these offers uh, you know especially the ones that were uh, saying that he got 100 million uh, offer 70 million offer he completely rejected those statements that they were false but this one right now is coming out and uh, apparently Two club sides, QPR one team, a division two club side 
in UK. And of course, our Etifak want him uh, a team that's currently playing in their first division uh, in Saudi Pro League. They want him. And the report is that our Etifak are ready to be paying him as much as 15 million naira every week, um, you know, for his services. QPR, I'm not quite sure about the wages, but it's not as much as our Etifak. What would you advise Stanley Wabali to do? Obviously, this is very interesting. We know that uh, the money in Saudi Arabia is very enticing and a lot of players are being drawn to it. But of course, uh, Stanley has a big decision to make, you know, in terms of selecting the, the club side that he wants to play. So what would you advise Stanley to do? Which club would you advise him to pick if he had these two options? Moving on, guys, let me let you know uh, the one that concerns a very... A very unpleasant experience uh, suffered by one of our Nigerian Tobago stri strikers, Tulu uh, Alokodari, who uh, plays for Gent. And over the weekend, he faced a series of uh, racial abuse from fans because they actually missed a penalty in their game against uh, Club Bruge. Uh, club Bruge is a club side that um, uh, Onyedika actually plays in. Onyedika played in that game. He was brilliant for his club, for his team, as they uh, won 3 0 for that one. But it was a shame, you know, to see how the fans of uh, Gent treated um, Alukudari because he missed a penalty in that one. And this is completely unacceptable. This is what we talk about football fans being too emotional, uh, going over the ledge because of uh you know what they feel or because of <coughs> disappointments that comes out from games we, we've talked about this before it happened to you will be with nigerian players obviously taking it too far and this one yet again uh you know directed to one of our players again this is completely unacceptable and it's even worse you know because it's coming from you know white fans white uh you know uh, football fans against a black person uh, but of course we know that he's a strong lad he has some very strong emotional intelligence he's been handling these kinds of uh you know issues channel that team and uh i just wanted to add this uh to the video here as a as a form of uh solidarity for uh alukudari tolu of course he's a very strong man strong champion in nigerian blood we definitely know that uh, that hurt him a lot, but he is, uh, he has, you know, seen worse than that and is definitely going to, uh, get up from that, uh, very, very, uh, dehumanizing, uh, you know, experience that he faced. Uh, but guys, that's the video. Thank you for catching this one as always. Uh, react, leave your reaction to, uh, for any of the, um, stories that you feel connected to. And, uh, thank you for watching the video. If you're not subscribed, I urge you to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for joining this one. Take care of yourself until I hit you again with my next video. Bye.